Hello everyone. I wanted to spend a little time talking about the first half of the novel that we're reading this semester. Of course, it's The River by Peter Heller. I'm excited to get into some literature and some fiction. Uh, it's something we haven't done this semester. We've run, read a number of essays, a variety of authors, but this is going to be our first uh, endeavor into fiction. And this is as much nature writing as any of the other authors that we've read. It's one of the things I truly love about this book is Peter Heller's ability to evoke nature, to not only use it as setting, but to express big ideas about the natural world and about humans' interaction with the natural world, which is something that we've been focused on throughout the semester. I want to talk really briefly here just about the novel itself, some ideas to watch out for, and then... Um, some themes and some other ideas about literature that I'm sure you've uh, heard before in literature classes. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the novel. This is this came out in 2018. Um, Peter Heller was really well known for a novel called Dog Stars, it's something I haven't read. It's um, a Vietnam story. This is a very detailed book about traveling by canoe, and it's detailed because Peter Heller himself took a journey like this when he was uh, young with a friend. And they, the two characters in this, Jack and Flynn, are uh, college students. They have the summer off. They're taking an adventure. And they uh, are going for a couple weeks on this canoe trip in the northern Canadian uh, provinces. This is an adventure story, but it's also very much a story about wildfire. And I'm not giving anything away. You can see from the cover. <laughs> and in the first chapter, they talk about this. But this is really, uh, especially the second half of the book, very much about what it would be like to to um, survive, and protect, potentially, <laughs> a wildfire. Um, not only how humans deal with wildfire, but also the animals that also um, exist in that area that the humans are traveling through. Now, in the New York Times review of this book, the author here, Denise Mina, says, The real delight in The River is nature writing. Uh, the River is a fiction addition to the new landscape writing of Robert McFarlane and Rebecca Solnit, prose so vivid and engaging that a city-dwelling reviewer can feel the clammy cold of a fog over a, fight, a river or the heat of subterranean tree roots burning underfoot in the aftermath of a fire. Heller, the author of Dog Stars and other novels, has an extraordinary facility for describing topography and vegetation. We can feel the sharpness of the rocks and the trilling excitement of the river as it approaches rapids. He brilliantly describes the physical process of wild living, shaking snowflakes of frost from a sleeping bag in the morning, quote, like an icy hatch of mayflies, quote, the joy of drinking sweet tea on a cold beach. Early encounters with wildlife become eerie as animals disappear, fleeing the fire. I think you're going to find this to be true as you read the novel. Not only is Peter Heller adept at describing human relationships, he's adept at describing the adventure of traveling by canoe for two weeks and the beauty of the nature surrounding these two characters. So as you're reading this book, note those moments where Heller uses the natural world. Ask yourself, how is he presenting nature? What is he trying to express about nature through his presentation of it? And in particular, what is Peter Heller trying to say about humans' interaction with the natural world? It's something we've been thinking about all semester. Why is Jack out there? Why is Flynn out there? What do they expect to gain from this experience? What's the reality of their experience compared to what their expectations uh, were? They've been preparing for this trip for a year, dreaming about it, looking at maps, jotting down gear lists. What is that preparation, or how does that preparation compare to the reality that they face? So this is very much, like I said, a story about adventure. And you know, we've read a couple authors that were 
choosing to be in a natural world, choosing to be in nature because of that adventure aspect and that it, that idea of testing oneself against the natural world. Um, Wendell Berry's an entrance into the woods is uh, along these lines as well. Stick Keen versus the Glacier is a great adventure story from John Muir. That ecstasy that he presents with uh, the sequoia trees and uh, in Squirrel Time in Nutville, which is one of my favorite little pieces, um, that exists in this book as well. Ask yourselves as you're reading this, what connections can we make to the authors that we've read from this semester? Beyond uh, the human's interaction with the natural world, this novel is also very much about friendship and companionship and sharing that experience with somebody else. So as you're reading the novel, think and ask yourself, what is Peter Heller trying to say about friendship here? What is he trying to say about how humans connect when they're removed from the greater population and they put themselves in isolation in the natural world? We've probably all had experiences with friends hiking or biking or walking or climbing um, they're very different than experiences I've had alone in the woods. Sometimes I love being by myself, but sometimes I absolutely adore going on a hike with a good friend. And so what is Peter Heller saying that nature provides in terms of fuel for friendship? Uh, I think that's something that he's exploring in this as well. And finally, I think, take a think about in this book, uh, what Peter Heller is trying to say about the reasons we go out into nature. I mentioned this before a little bit, but why is Jack doing this? Why is Flynn doing this? Are their purposes similar? Are they different? How are they different? What are some of the author's purposes for going out into nature and seeking solace, um, in the natural world amongst the flora and fauna. How does that, how do those authors experiences compare with the two main characters in this novel? So those are some questions and themes to consider. Finally, just with literature, a quick review. We generally have some literary elements that we look at when we're reading a short story, a poem, a play, or a novel. We look at characters, we look at setting, we look at symbols, we look at point of view, uh, we look at the plot, and we look at theme. I just want to say a little bit about a couple of these before we launch into this week with our novel. Characters, of course, are the people involved in the story. Not always people, um, but certainly characters have human qualities, human emotions. Authors can express who a character is in a, in a multitude of different ways. So as you're reading the book, ask yourself and notice, how is Peter Heller telling us who Jack is? How is Peter Heller telling us who Flynn is? How do we learn about these people? You know, in general, we learn about characters the same way we learn about people in the real world. Stories that they tell, their past experiences, um, their professions, their cultures, their languages, their knowledge. We learn about people that way, we learn about characters that way. And when we read a novel or play or story, uh, we find out about those characters in moments of characterization. And those moments of characterization are generally tied up in actions. And in those actions, we can discern traits, how people behave. So look for those moments of characterization in the river. Again, what are those times where we get to learn who these people are? Secondly, we can talk about setting. Now, setting is place. It's the where, it's the when, it's the weather. Setting can be used a number of different ways in not a story, and I think Peter Heller uses seller setting in a number of different ways in this book. Setting can set the mood, right? Tell us, give us how the story feels. Setting can um, tell us about people can give us information about characters. Setting can be an antagonist or create conflict. Setting can be used symbolically, and setting can also point us towards a theme. I think Peter Heller's using set the setting of uh, the woods and the river 
in a number of different ways here. The way that Jack and Flynn interact with their natural world provides us clues about who they are. Uh, there might be some symbolism in terms of the fire in this novel or other elements of the river. And finally, I think setting is pointing us certainly towards theme. Now, theme in a story is a big idea about life that the author wants to express. And we're going to be thinking about this a lot this week and certainly next week. What is P Peter, what is the big idea Peter Heller is getting at? A novel is going to have multiple themes, so there's probably multiple big ideas about life in this book. What are some of them? Certainly for me, when I read this, there's some themes of companionship, of humans' interaction with the natural world, of uh, the human world itself as compared to the natural world. Um, and then, of course, the destruction um, and life that a forest fire can bring. And we'll, we'll think more about forest fires next week uh, when we really get into the second half of the novel. But themes are those big ideas about life. Look for them as you're reading. Finally, there's things like point of view, who's telling us the story, symbols, which can be items or actions that generally represent more than their literal self. There's certainly some moments in this book where action takes precedence and, and can be viewed symbolically. Um, and then finally, you have a few other little minor literary elements, um, like author biography or character names or the title. Those are things to consider as well. So that's just a little quick three-minute review <laughs> on liter literary elements and literature qualities. All right. I think that's what I got for you. Enjoy the river. I really had a fun time reading this book, and I'm looking forward to rereading it with you in the, over the next few weeks. And um, take care. I'll be talking to you soon.